It's time for Bacon and Eggs. Good morning. I'm Leah Fleming. Charles Richardson, editorial page editor at The Telegraph, back in studio. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Hot topic number one takes us to the greatest. Muhammad Ali will be laid to rest tomorrow Mm -hmm. in, is it Louisville, Kentucky? Right. And he made a, a trip to Macon. You actually had the opportunity to meet the greatest. Talk about that. Well, you know, he was the Grand Marshal down in Fort Valley mm-hmm. for their homecoming parade. And, you know, this was back in 1989, so he was a much younger fellow then. <laughs> than and, he, and so was I. <laughs> Um, the thing I remember most about him is that he was just a friendly fellow, just getting along with everybody, but shaking his hand. You know, he wa- he was about 6'2", still in very good shape. Was he boxing then? or No, he had no, a good no. time. He, 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 he wasn't boxing then, but his hands were huge. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got pretty big hands, too, <laughs> and it's just like he just swallowed mine up. You know, <laughs> but he's just joking around with everybody, doing mm-hmm. card tricks, just, you know, faking, faking people out. And, you know, when a heavyweight champion fakes like he's going to swing at you, you got to duck. <laughs> You have no choice. So when Ed Bradley was, uh, they were showing a, a cut with him on uh, 60 Minutes, and when uh, 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 the greatest was faking at him, and and Bradley would would would, would turn his head. Well, I understood exactly what was going on because <laughs> Muhammad Ali was so quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, when they say he floated like a butter- butterfly and stung like a bee, you never saw it coming. So when he was doing that to you, you never saw it. You wouldn't see it coming. Mm-hmm. He was that quick. Wow. So he'd hit you, and, and you'd be on the floor, and you'd be wondering, how'd I get here? <laughs> <laughs> so you just naturally, he was a great athlete, mm-hmm. and he was also a great man. A lot of people don't want to give him that kind of props, getting some letters in even now saying, well, he didn't go to the Vietnam draft, da, 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 da. Well, whatever. But I can tell you this, watching the film over and over again when he – came out on the Olympic stage in 1996 and the roar that he received because it was the best kept secret for the Atlanta Summer Games, that tells you how great he was. Yes, yeah. Stuck by his convictions. Oh, And I understand that he really did um, move a generation of other black men. Yes. He really did inspire um, a lot of men to... um, be themselves and and to and to stick by their convictions Mm -hmm. to stick by their convictions no matter the cost it cost him three and a half years of his boxing career in his prime Mm -hmm. no telling how much money it cost him but he stuck by his convictions Ah, he came through middle georgia came through middle georgia we are so fortunate (laughs) that smile that smile oh well rest in peace to him and um and and certainly our sincere um, thoughts are with the, his family. Um, yes, and, and I've got some pictures on my Facebook page that I borrowed that I found on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I just shared them that were taken in his in, back in March, mm-hmm. and he still looked good then. Oh. Still looked good then. You know, he's mm-hmm. seventy four, mm-hmm. but looking good at seventy four. You never know how quickly you can leave here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, rest in peace to the greatest. Yes. <laughs> All right, on to hot topic number two. The Bibb County School Board has tentatively approved a $197 million budget for the upcoming fiscal year that would give a 3% raise to employees, yay. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Telegraph reports, though, that uh, board members, um, they did vote to approve the budget, 6 to 2, but if approved, that would mean higher property taxes. Yes. Talk about that, and and what does that mean? Well, what it basically means is that in order for the school system to stay solvent, they have to keep about an 8% cushion Mm -hmm. in order for the the school system to stay solvent. That cushion goes away if they don't raise taxes, goes away in 2017. And then they start operating at a a deficit. That means you don't have money to operate. Mm -hmm. So the governor basically put them in this trick bag. He stood up back at the state of the state address and said, here, we want to give teachers a 3% raise, and we're giving you money to do it. That was a lie. Over the past 10 years, the state has taken $8 billion out of the school budget. If the state wanted to give teachers a raise, all he had to do was increase the state state contributions to teachers' salaries. 
he didn't have to ask anybody. So he said, we hope the districts will give them a raise. Uh, so he put the districts, all 159 of them, oh, um, in, in this bind. In this bind mm-hmm. When some districts were still having to furlough teachers and then didn't give them enough money to do it. So you have teachers now saying, oh, the governor said we're getting we're a raise. We're getting a raise, right. Well, that's not correct. Oh. So, so now Bibb County is trying to make good on that? They're is trying to, and, and not only just Bibb County, every other every county in the state. Oh. And for Bibb County, that means $4 million. Now, you take that $4 million with or without a raise. It just depends on when the system goes broke whether it be in 2017 or 2018. But with or without a raise or without a tax increase, that's going to happen. That is definitely going to happen. Right. With, with or without a raise. It just depends which year. It's what year. So that's why the property tax increase is necessary. Is necessary. The public is invited to come out to talk about that, mm-hmm. to give their feedback, and then there will be a vote. Right. And uh, the Bibb school leaders will vote on that right. uh, toward the end of the month. Uh, June 23rd. Nobody wants to raise taxes, Mm -mm. but everybody thinks everything stays the same. It does not. There's a 14% increase on their health insurance this time around. So things don't stay the same. Wow. And we've not had a property tax increase since 2008. Really? (laughs) So, you know, just... It's, you know, yeah. have have your bills gone up since two thousand eight? Mm-hmm. Mine have. Mm-hmm. And for a two hundred thousand dollar house, we're talking about about a hundred and fifty bucks. Okay, so this is what uh, people could potentially see. Right. And I know that the Bibb County School Superintendent has said we need to remain competitive uh, by making sure that the salaries of our educators. Right. You know, and and the the, the school funding formula mm-hmm. uh, called QBE one the state has never ever fully funded it, and since to give you an example, Houston County is 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 categorized as a rural county, meaning they get about a hundred million dollars a year more than Bibb County. Hmm. So yeah. you know. Talk about competitive. Talk about competitive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hard to be competitive when someone's got $100 million more than you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Speaking of schools, uh, this is hot topic number three. A federal bankruptcy judge has set a date of June 22nd uh, mm-hmm. for a hearing on whether state officials can go ahead with plans to shut down the Macon Charter Academy. This is uh, an academy that has just had trouble after trouble since it opened last fall it's only a year old and it's it's not going to make its first birthday this is it you think this is it i mean the state is the state and the local board has said that the reason they're going through this is so that they can take its charter away Mm -hmm. and they thought the the mca board thought that maybe the bankruptcy would hold that off but it's not so this will so by the fall Students will need to have a place to attend. If, if you were a parent mm-hmm. right now and you have thoughts of t- sending your child there, you better rethink that. Yeah, yeah. So June 22nd is the date uh, that we will, we will know probably for sure. We'll know for sure, and then, of course, the state board will have to act at its next meeting, and mm-hmm. it'll go on from there. Yeah, but in the fall, students will need a place to attend school. Right. Yeah. All right. I know that's most unfortunate for so many people that had high hopes for this academy. High hopes, and, and, and it's, it's, it is a shame because mm-hmm. it's not the children's fault. No. But when you don't have computers in classrooms, yeah. when you have sanitation st- issues, Good sanitation grief. issues, when you start off your school year at the Centriplex, yeah. from the very beginning, it's been troubled. And that's the thing about charters is if it's not working, you're supposed to close them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, that is most unfortunate. Um, and we will continue to watch and we'll talk about mm-hmm. it again when we next meet. Uh, so this is it for us for this week. Uh, go to Macon.com to see the video. We are on video. GPBnews.org is the other place. She's something to, to look at. I'm not. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> 
<laughs> always smooth. Always smooth, Charles is. All right. We'll be, we'll be back again next week. See you then.